QE is coming to an end, eventually. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Allison Southwick. The market was up and down today amidst the release of the Fed's July minutes and the threat of imminent tapering of stimulus. We heard more good news, though, in the housing sector as existing home sales were up a solid 6.5 percent in July, the highest since 2009. Joining me now in studio are Matt Argersinger and Jason Moser. Gentlemen, our top story. The market held its breath today for the Fed. Minutes from July's meeting came out, and no one really knew what to think about it, least of all the market. So, Jason, what did you think about the minutes that came out today? I don't know. I, I'm, having trouble, I'm having trouble figuring out exactly how to feel about this. It's like when your, your parents tell you they're going to come in town and visit you for Christmas or something. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure how to feel about it. There's some uncertainty there, and I think <laughs> that's what we've been seeing with the market so far, is all of this uncertainty, don't really know where anything's going, and, and the release of these notes, it just, it, it's more uncertainty, which, you know, unfortunately, we want to see the economy improving. We, we, we want to see unemployment improving. We don't have enough folks who are studying this on a day-by-day -day basis to really get behind that theme. And so I, I would be surprised to see any tapering before the end of the year, but that's just me. Yeah, so Matt, some people are saying we're going to see tapering before the end of the year, completely be done by 2014. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on this? Do you even care? I, uh, I care a little bit. I mean, it, obviously you could see the disagreement on, among the Fed members themselves. Some say we should start tapering sooner. Some say, well, we have to be cautious. There's still weakness to the economy. Uh, bottom line, really. I mean, there's just really stuff you don't want to be focusing on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for sure. Uh, you know, and, and for me, when I look at this and I see some of the reactions the market is getting with, with the threat of tapering, you know, you're seeing a lot of yield-based securities like REITs being hit really hard. It makes me think, yeah, there's going to be opportunities eventually. So, you know, bring it on. Bring on the Fed taper talk. And if it gives me bargains in my favorite stock ideas, I'm happy about that. Yeah, Jason, how does this affect your investing strategy? He's hoping to go shopping. What are you planning on doing? Oh, I mean, I hope to go shopping, too. I mean, let's be very clear here. I, I am pulling for tapering because that means things are getting better. I think it's a shame that we have people who don't want tapering. They kind of want this sort of juice to continue. But I do think that you can use these sorts of headline-driven events and buy into real quality companies that are playing their way into these big long-term trends. And I'm talking about things like e-commerce, for example. Well, you look at your, your Amazon.coms or even a Google to a degree, uh, or, or electronic payments. You see your MasterCards and Visas, very quality companies that every once in a while you see these headline-driven events. Those stock prices, they go down. Those stocks go on sale. It's worth, worth a chance to, to pick up a few shares. So. All right, now it's time to look at today's movers and shakers. Target is the latest retailer to report a dismal second quarter. While they beat on earnings, the co company missed sales estimates. So, Matt, big box retailers keep blaming consumers. They say they're being too frugal. Do you buy it? I, I don't buy it, Allison, because, I mean, we see strength in other areas of the market, automotive, home improvement, even the electronic space. So the fact that companies like Target, Walmart, Macy's to a certain extent, these sort of big department, we want to sell everything type of places are, are struggling, just shows me that consumers are, are being more selective about their purchasing. And so, uh, you know, I'm not a fan necessarily of these big box retailers like Target because I think customers are deciding where they want to shop, what they want to buy, and how much they want to pay. And that makes them very selective in their, in their uh, shopping and they're not gravitating towards these big mass market retailers anymore. All right. Lowe's is up after reporting that second quarter earnings jumped 26 percent. So, Jason, Lowe's is kind of where housing meets retail. And in this case, it looks like the recovering housing market kind of trumped the dismal retail industry. Yeah. And I mean, I think we're seeing sort of we're seeing a, a bounce in in home purchases, which is good. And obviously, with rates so low, a lot of people uh, have been refinancing. And I think that when you refinance like that, you tend to stick around for a little bit longer. So we've been saying for a while now that your Home Depots and your Lowe's uh, would be good, good places to look. Uh, now, Home Depot is bigger. Home Depot maintains better margins, more profitability. But Lowe's has certainly kind of come back from the dead here over the past year. Uh, the problem is that those two companies, they're not secrets. Everybody knows about them. Uh, so it's worth the chance maybe to look a little bit deeper into the housing, uh, the housing market and, and maybe pick up something a little bit more obscure, like a Sherwin-Williams paint company, for example, because painting is one of those first things that, that happens when you're, when you're renovating or if you buy a new house. And so, uh, yeah, I think the housing, housing recovery definitely has some traction. Staples stock took a plunge after reporting Q2 numbers. Profit was down 
15% on weak international sales, and the company cut guidance for the full year. So, Matt, in light of all the numbers we've seen from big box retail, were you surprised at all here? Not surprised at all. I mean, you know, I, and I hate to say it, in the, in the case of Staples and sort of the office product retailers, I mean, the only people that are really shopping there now are crickets. I mean, that's kind of what I hear when I go to these stores. I'm sad to say. Uh, Staples, their same store sales were down 3%. Profits were down 15%. They closed over 100 stores in the past year, and that's a trend that's going to continue. So they've got these a big fixed cost base that's being spread over a smaller number of stores, lower revenue. That's definitely going to hurt their, their margins over time. And I just think overall, we're just not buying a lot of printers and ink cartridges and paper and office supplies and things like we used to in the past. And I don't see that trend changing. We're doing things electronically over tablets, over email. Uh, so when I think about office supply stores like Staples, very bearish here. It's hard to see how they're going to turn things around. Finally, PetSmart is down despite a solid earnings report. The company beat on profit, met revenue estimates, and raised earning guidance for the full year. But the market didn't like it. So what happened? Well, I don't think it's actually all that bad of a quarter. And as the owner of two dogs at home, two big dogs, I mean, they cost a lot of money. And so I like that market that PetSmart is in. It's sort of that, you know, people are going to take care of their pets in good times and bad regardless. Uh, the biggest problem I saw, and, and this is really just a little bit of nuance, but if you look uh, at their same store sales last year, the same time versus this year, it was cut in about half this year. So there is some slowdown there. Now, with that said, the range for their third quarter guidance, uh, it, it looks like they might not be able to meet expectations or it's going to be very close call there. And with the drumming that, that retail has been taken here over the past couple of days, you know, I think that's where the sell-off really comes from. Still a very quality company, though. All right, that covers it for today. Let's look ahead. One stock on your radar, Matt. Oh, it's Pandora. You know, they report earnings tomorrow. Some really great numbers uh, from July. 1.28 billion listening hours. That's up 14% year over year. 71 million active listeners. That's up 30%. Um, and their share of, of total radio listening in the U.S. up to 7% from 6% a year ago. So Pandora's killing it. It's just a matter of, you know, can they keep that momentum going? And we know that Apple and Google have sort of internet radio plans uh, in their future. So... Uh, really excited to see what their earnings are like tomorrow and see if they can keep the momentum going. All right, Jason, how about you? I can't wait till your daughter's old enough and you get that Pandora Disney Channel going in your car. You just can't get those songs out of your head. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be sticking with the retail theme here. Looking at Gap, they have earnings coming out tomorrow. This has been an unbelievable story over the past couple of years. They were faced with some really high cotton costs. The stock was getting hammered. There was a leadership change, but they've really turned this thing around. The stock has just been on fire the past couple of years. And then I think you also have to just love the number of brands that are underneath that Gap umbrella. I mean, you have Gap, you have Banana Republic, Old Navy, Athleta. These catalogs are in virtually every house in the United States. So I actually expect a pretty good quarter from them tomorrow. All right. Well, that covers it today for Jason Moser and Matt Argersinger. I'm Allison Southwick. Thanks for watching.